Wednesday is the sex education of Sunday in the area in, in Wisconsin, New Ransburg. And the epistle for this sex education of Sunday is taken from St. Paul's second letter of Corinthians, chapters 11 and 12. Brethren, you gladly suffer the foolish, whereas you yourselves are wise. For you will suffer a man bring you into bondage, if a man devour you, if a man take from you, if a man be lifted up, if a man strike you on the face. I speak according to dishonor, as if we have been weak in this part. Wherein, if any man dare, and I speak foolishly, I dare also. They are Hebrews, so am I. They are Israelites, so am I. They are the seed of Abraham, so am I. They are the ministers of Christ, I speak as one less wise. I am more, in many more labors, in prisons more frequently, in stripes above measure, in deaths often. Of the Jews five times did I receive forty stripes, save one. Thrice was I beaten with rods, once I was stoned. Thrice I suffered shipwreck, a night and a day I was in the depth of the sea. In journeying often, in perils of waters, in perils of robbers, in perils from my own nation, in perils from the Gentiles, in perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils from false brethren, in labor and painfulness, in much watching, in hunger and thirst, in fastings often, in cold and nakedness. Besides these things which are without my daily instance, the solicitude for all the churches. Who is weak, and I am not weak? Who is scandalized, and I am not on fire? If I must needs glory, I will glory of the things that concern my infirmity. The God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who is blessed forever, that I knoweth that I lie not. At Damascus, the governor of the nation under Aretas, the king guarded the city of the Damascenes to apprehend me. And through a window in a basket was I let down by the wall, and so escaped his hands. If I must glory, it is not expedient indeed, but I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord. I know a man in Christ about fourteen years ago, whether in the body I know not, or out of the body I know not, God knows. But such a one was caught up into the third heaven. And I know such a man, whether in the body or out of the body I know not, God knoweth. And he was caught up into paradise, and heard secret words, which it is not granted for man to utter. From what such one I shall glorify, I shall glory. But as for myself, I shall glory, I will glory nothing but in my infirmities. For though I should have a mind to glory, I shall not be foolish, for I will say the truth. But I forbear lest any man should think of me above that which he seeth in me, or anything he heareth from me. Unless the greatness of the revelation should exalt me, there was given me a sing of the flesh, an angel of Satan to buffet me, for which thing thrice I besought the Lord, that it might depart from me. And he said to me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for power is made perfect in infirmity. Rather therefore will I glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may dwell in me. Then the Gospel, taking that according to St. Luke chapter 8. At that time, when a very great multitude was gathered together and hastened out of the cities unto Jesus, under Jesus, he spoke by a similitude. The sower went out to sow his seed, and as he sowed, some fell by the wayside, and it was trodden down, and the fowls of the air devoured it. And other some fell upon a rock, and as soon as it was sprung up, it withered away, because it had no moisture. Other some fell among thorns, and the thorns <clears throat> growing up with it choked it, and other some fell upon good ground, and being sprung up, yielded fruit a hundredfold. Saying, after saying these things, he cried out, He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. And his disciples asked him what this parable might be. To whom he said, To you it is given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God, but to the rest in parables, that seeing they may not see, and hearing they may not understand. Now the parable is this, The seed is the word of God, and they by the wayside are they that hear, when the devil cometh and taketh the word out of their heart lest believing they should be saved. Now they upon the rock are they who, when they have here, receive the word with joy, and these have no roots. For they believe for a while, and in time of temptation they fall away. And that which fell among the thorns are they who have heard, and going through their way are choked with the cares and riches and pleasures of this life, 
and yield no fruit. But that on the good ground are they who in a good and perfect heart, hearing the word of God, hearing the word, keep it, and bring forth fruit in patience. Thus are the words of today's holy gospel. In the middle of this short season of Septuagint Jezima, in preparation for the great season of Lent, getting ready for Good Friday, and this time is called the time of the deviation, the time of man walking away from God. What are we to do in the time of deviation? We're in the middle of this time. So the end seems so very far away when Jesus Christ is going to finally die on the cross and very quickly defeat Satan and on the third day rise. In the beginning, it seemed like a long time ago as well when Adam decided to sin and man decided to walk away from God. Now we're in the middle of a long fight. When we consider in this period that, you know, that there's the, 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 the seed falls on four different types of ground. God comes and appears to Noah. We read about Noah in the sacred scripture today in the book of Genesis. That God came down, looked upon the earth, and he saw that it was filled with sin. And he said, I repented myself that I have made man. He lives over 900 years on this earth, and all he does is fill up these years with sin. And he said, I will shorten the days of man to 120 years. Before the flood, man lived an average of 900 years upon the earth. And he said, I will shorten the days of man, and I will bring an end to the flesh. And after he sees that there is sin throughout the whole world, the man has turned himself to every kind of wickedness. And that's what man does during his 900 years. You would think man would learn from his mistakes. We live only 120 years at the most nowadays. And we think after 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, 50 years, 60 years, we would learn from our mistakes and become more wise as we grow older. But in fact, all we do is harden ourselves in sin and do the sins over and over again and turn our hearts away from God and turn our hearts towards the things of this world and turn our hearts towards whatever our pleasures and desires may be and our hearts never turn back. Give them more time. Give them more time. Give them more time. This is one of the lies of evolution, that if you give enough time to anyone, give enough time to anything, it's just going to somehow get better. But God saw that he gave man over 900 years of life on this earth. That's a lot of time. And during that time, he did not get better. In fact, he became more hardened in sin. It was not beneficial to give him all this time. And therefore, for the sake that he, of, of our own souls, that those who find themselves damned will have less sins for which to suffer in hell and shall not suffer like they would had they lived 900 years upon this earth. And for those that are saved, their time of trial will be shortened. They will only have to fight the devil for a short period of time. And Methuselah and Adam and Eve and the saints of the Old Testament, you know, that they had to fight for so many generations against the devil. We have to fight only for a few generations. Our Lord Jesus Christ himself said, the days will be shortened for the sake of the elect. And his first shortening of the days was done at the time of the flood where we would no longer live 900 years upon the earth, but only 120 years at the, ma at the maximum. And then during this period, we would have to decide whether we're going to be in the kingdom of Christ or in the kingdom of hell. And it's enough time. It's more than enough time. And the days are shortened. And why are they shortened? For the sake of the elect. He comes down to Noah, and he tells Noah that sin has filled the earth, wickedness has filled the earth, and now I'm going to wipe out all flesh by the means of a great flood. Therefore I command you to build an ark. And it shall be 150 cubits long, it shall be 50 cubits wide, it shall be 30 cubits tall, it shall be filled with pitch on the inside and on the out, and so you shall build it. It shall have tiny rooms inside of it, in which shall be housed all the animals of the world. And so he built it according to God's command. He was 500 years old when he began to construct the ark. 100 years later, he was finally finished with his work. A hundred years passed between the time that God said, I am angry with the earth, and I'm going to punish it, and I'm going to wipe it out. We see that the wrath of God and the justice of God does come, but yet it moves so slowly. 
It moves so slowly. When that same God who was on the cross, when he saw a wicked man beside him, who lived a wicked life, who on the beginning of Good Friday cursed him most violently and called him by many wicked names, when that man repented and said, this man has done no wrong, he very quickly forgave him. Instantly he forgave the thief. But when he said, I'm punished with the world, it's punished, it's over, I'm no longer given it any more time, 100 years later, the wrath of God came. And during those 100 years, many souls had a chance to repent, but how many of them did repent? Time doesn't fix fences. Time doesn't fix our health. Time is not enough to heal us. We must take action. We must do things. And what did Adam, what did Noah do? He obeyed God. And how did he obey him? In the simple things. He wants this ark to be 150 cubits long. So I'm going to get the wood. I'm going to lay it out to 150 cubits. I'm going to make sure that it's 50 cubits wide. I'm going to ensure that it's 30 cubits tall. We're going to take pitch and we're going to put it here and there. And we're going to gather pitch and put pitch in all kinds of places, both inside and outside of the ark. We will obey God in small things and obey God consistently over these hundred years. We have, a, we have only a few men working in this ark, Noah and his three sons. What are they dealing with during those 100 years? Mockery, the assault of the enemies of God. And this reminds us, and we see here that in the gospel of today, our Lord said there are four kinds of ground, three bad grounds, the wayside and the rocky ground. And there are going to be three different kinds of bad ground. But there's going, to be, there's going to be one good ground with a perfect heart. And it says, these shall bear fruit in patience. You know, remember when it comes to building in the army of God, patience is an essential part of the work that we do. We will bear fruit, but in patience. It's like when you take a battering ram and you put it against a wall, a door, the gate of a city. You hit the, you hit the gate and 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 you don't see any signs of fractures. You see no signs of an opening, but you have to continue to hit the gate in patience. And you keep hitting that gate with a battering ram and infallibly there will come a time when a whack shall cause the entire thing to collapse, shall cause it to break, shall cause it to be opened. The battering ram that continues to hit the gate will always destroy the gate, and the gate will not win. The only way the gate can win is if the battering ram stops hitting the gate. So those who work for the kingdom of heaven, and they see the doors appear to be shut, and they see there appears to be so many walls and so many obstacles getting to God, just keep taking that battering ram, keep hitting that gate. You see our rosary win every day. Not just sometimes, and if we fall off a horse, what do we do? We get back on. We go to confession, and we go to confession, and we go to confession. And we say the rosary, and say the rosary, and say the rosary. And we do the works of charity, and do the works of charity, and do the works of charity. And many, many times we are rejected, and many, many times we have struggles and difficulties, and many, many times there appears to be no success. There appears to be no benefit. Keep, take the battery ram and keep hitting. Because say, our Lord Jesus Christ says, those who are going to have victory in my kingdom, it shall be in patience. Remember what he said to Judas on Holy Thursday night. What thou must do, do quickly. And Judas quickly did his work. He quickly collected 30 pieces of silver. He quickly gathered a mob. He quickly went to the garden. And his work was done. And Judas did not live through the next day. His apostles were still being slowly formed, and they were terrified, and they ran away. But at the end of Good Friday, the apostles, the 11 apostles, were still alive, and they would live many years afterwards, and they would continue to go and do good and spread the faith throughout the world until they would finally die martyrs. They would live longer. Judas would act quickly, and quickly he would be gone. We must understand that when we are doing the work of God, we must work daily. We must work with a certain haste, with a certain men of urgency. And yet we must understand that the good of the work of God is patiently worked out. It happens over time. So when St. Paul tells us about his sufferings in the very long epistle today, one of the longest epistles of the whole year, when he says the very long epistle, thrice he was scourged and he was in the sea, a day and the night in the sea, and, and, and he was a, 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 had so many tribulations and perils of false brethren, and perils in the sea, and perils in the night, and perils in all manner of life, and so many difficulties he had. 
but through every one of them the Lord brought him. And at the end of his bringing of him through these great trials and tribulations, what happened? There became the work of patience. And the patience of St. Paul brought about the conversion of the Gentiles, a conversion that's still going on 2,000 years after St. Paul died. It's an ongoing work. It is an ongoing victory. All Gentiles who receive the faith are because of that work of St. Paul. And he worked in patience, and he kept pounding, and he kept working, and he had to flee one place. He was put in prison so many times, and he had to flee from one city to another. And he had to experience all kinds of tribulations, but he continued to preach the word of God. He continued to, to bring the sacraments of souls. And he realized that his, his battle and his work would persevere. So we're in this time of sexagesima, which is the middle time between the beginning of the deviation and the end of the victory of Christ. We don't know the day the victory of Christ is coming at the end. And it seems so long ago when the devil began to take charge. What do we do in this middle time? Keep pounding that battering ram against the gate of heaven. Remember what our Lord said, knock and, to, and, and with importunity, ask with importunity, like the man who comes to the house and says, ask for his friend for bread, come back in the morning, don't listen to him, keep knocking, keep knocking, keep knocking. And this is what we have to do in this time of sexagesima, we have to keep knocking. The Blessed Virgin Mary shall have her victory, it shall come soon. There shall be a rebirth of Christendom, it shall come, but it seems so far in the future. And it was so long ago when our enemies and the enemies of God took over the world. And they seem to be getting more powerful every day. What do we do? Keep battering that ram against the gate. Keep knocking. Keep asking heaven. And recognize that our work shall have its fruit in patience. In patience. What did our Lord say? He that perseveres unto the end shall be saved. So we must beg the grace to persevere unto the end. And keep pounding the door with the rattling ram against the door in this time of sexagesima, until the victory comes of the Blessed Virgin Mary and Christ at the end of times. Those who know the bless you all, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost, amen.